I'm Firefighter Size. I'm Engineer Freda. And this is Two and a Half and Waffles. Our departments are real things. They always have the exact same problems. So just take care of business. So what we're practicing is, is that Rosie was blowing the line and I charged it for her and they need to go enact some rescues up on the second floor. So I can keep flowing in that path of egress for the victims that need to come out. We're practicing like this is a center hallway apartment and the victims need to come out. I need to flow to get that fire put out and they're going to go start doing rescues up on the second floor. My body's in kind of a lazy L, right? Yeah. And I keep the hose right in the L, right? So I press it in, and that's how I hold it, right? Yeah. So once it's in that L, I can hold it there. 
When Dave comes up behind me, I'm gonna take my L, turn it into an I, right? And when he gets there, I'm gonna lay the whole I back. Okay. And I don't turn it into an L again. Yeah. I keep it as that I. Okay. Forward. So a couple of things I would do here, right? So with my eyes closed, obviously I can't just watch the hooks. So I'm always gonna provide just a little bit of pressure so that when that nozzle moves, I almost fall forward, right? So yes. then as I turn to fall, I'm like, oh, let's be time to go. Yes, sir. Right, does that make sense? Yes, sir. Then I'm also, I'll leave the hose on my thigh just a little bit. Again, just as that tell. And then I'm really paying attention to my thigh on my front arm to, to try to direct it. center staircase. That's the first firefighter with the 14. Engine response. Medical alarm, we got a lockbox. Copy. First left, David. Yes, sir. So we went on the medical alarm, everybody was fine, but we gave us an opportunity to look at their house and understand its layout, right? Rosie's pretty new, so we're trying to get her to understand house layouts. So we talked about their house, we came over here. Um, this hydrant we've had problems with in the past, so we hit it really fast just to make sure that all those problems have been fixed. It turns out the water district did replace it as we had requested. Um, and now we're just talking about a couple other houses that we see in this neighborhood and those little nuances. That's all gonna help in zero visibility as we're crawling into this house because we know what to expect when we get upstairs. And then what about this pitch of this roof and this roof in particular? So say you get roped, unfortunately you get roped out to Tower 32 for the day. Gross. What are you oh. thinking about for this roof? Like for cutting? That's yeah, pretty like, steep. absolutely. Yeah. So what are you thinking you're gonna need? The roof ladder. Roof ladder for sure. And then what do you know about these shingles? It's slippery, it's like. Yeah, it is very steep and a very long pitch of a roof. Yes. That it's gonna be difficult to get up there to Giant Tree Company 33 and Tower 32, southbound I-25, just north of 470. Multiple RPs, passerbys reporting a single vehicle rollover, a white van that landed on its wheels after striking the right guardrail. No other information. Okay, copy. Single vehicle that rolled southbound 4, uh, 25 and C-470. Why don't you move over to an op channel? Okay, we'll see you on Ops 3, Ops number 3. Diane 3. I'm on V1, one van. Ladder damage looks like all parties are out. We are going to be 25 southbound under C470 on the right shoulder.
<laughs> so this is our meta crew, Captain Schmidt. Gentlemen, say hello. Hi. Two and a half of waffle Sunday. So this is our apparatus bay. This is where we house our engine, our medic unit, and our brush truck behind it. We were a single company house until the beginning of this year when we started staffing this medic full time here at station 33. Uh, it's been great having five or six of us depending on staffing here at the station. It's a lot of fun. It's a small house. We're always kind of, you know, hanging out together because of the size of this house. And uh, it's a lot of fun to be around your crew. So we've already done a fleet Friday. Uh, Engineer Freda showed around uh, with the engine. Uh, but we also have Medic 33 here running with our medical calls. A lot of times we run together, but oftentimes we're going to run uh, dual with other stations around the district, depending on um, what other stations are running calls. And uh, this is our brush truck as well. So it is wildland season. So we need to make sure that we're staying on top of our wildland training. Uh, Cause if we get toned out, then this brush truck is gonna be doing all the work. Uh, here at station 33, we actually have some really cool training props. Uh, this is gonna be a training prop for um, hose deployments. So similar to our pre-connect. Uh, right now there is no hose in it cause our hose uh, got sent out for testing. Uh, but when we do have hose, we set it up the exact same way as the pre-connect on the engine. Uh, so it's just a nice way to get extra reps in and more importantly um, on inclement weather days when it's not ideal to take the engine out, um, we can actually still do some training here inside the bay. Um, and then we also have a hydrant prompt here. Uh, so obviously it's not connected to water, but it's still great to be able to get reps in, get your process down. Um, a lot of that is just, you know, repetition. So we can hit a hydrant out here and include it in our training. And then we also have um, stand pipe uh, props here. So we actually will take these downstairs into our basement, which you will see here in a bit. Um, but we can utilize these training props to mimic what it would be like to respond um, to a call that we would have to utilize the stand pipe um, without actually going to um, a location to utilize you know, their stand pipe operations. Um, and then again, with um, this hose uh, training prop, uh, this also is limited profile. Um, training as well. We got some wires, um, some smaller spaces to have to work through. So uh, can you utilize this in many different ways. Um, so you can always stay busy. So at station 33, we have a hose tower. It's right here. It's where we hang our hose after fires or we need to clean it and it's wet. So we'll take our hose, we'll run it up here. We'll hang it off this hook up there. And this is also where we put our medic unit when they're in timeout. You silly gooses. So coming in the back, this is where we have all of our bedrooms on the second floor here. There's five bedrooms up here. They're all very similar. This used to be an open uh, bunk room a long time ago, and they put these walls in with the doors to give us a little bit more privacy. We're super lucky that the department has purchased some really nice mattresses for us as well as some blackout curtains. We've realized that sleep is super important. We're a decently busy fire, fire station, so getting some extra sleep if we need to in the morning is really important. So we have the blackout curtains, we have some nice mattresses, we have the red light to keep that blue light down and out of our eyes. Coming this way is our bathroom that's on the second floor, top floor. As you can see, it's really nice and modern bathroom. Um, we share this one on the second floor here. We have some ba bathrooms and bedrooms downstairs as well. This bathroom is original to this firehouse, which is pretty awesome that, you know, not a lot has changed in here over the years since this firehouse got built in the late seventies. So going this way, we're going to go down the hallway, going past our map. Uh, station 33 is right here. We like to say that we're the heart of the district. We're right in the center of our fire district. Uh, we have very great access to a lot of our district. We have fast access to I-25 and 470. So we're super lucky that we get to go on a lot of calls in the greater part of our district because of our access and being right here in the center of the fire department. This is the captain's office. This is where Captain Schmidt does all of his captaining uh, he does his reports here at the computer. He does his daily calls with the battalion chief and all of our battalion officers in the morning. This is where he works. And then this is kind of the catch-all room. So this is our day room where we'll 
every once in a while sit down and watch a game of some sort or watch some sports, hang out. This is where we do all of our computer stuff. We have to do our target solutions, computer training. Uh, if we need to do reports, our medics will do reports up here. This is where I do my engine checkoffs uh, every set when we come in. And then it's our kitchen. It's not a giant fire station where you can kind of go disappear. I really like the people I work with and I like spending time with them when I come to work. So it's a lot of fun that we're kind of forced to be together and have fun and hang out and build that crew camaraderie. We have a lot of pictures of past fires. Medic, medical response. Love you guys, be safe. So we have a lot of pictures from past fires, past apparatus, um, some crazy car accidents. This picture was brought to us by one of our former firefighters and it's actually of that wall there that a shift back in 2018 painted the Colorado flag. And we took some of this um, so like this three and the engine company and did it, we put it in our new logo. As we talked about, it's two and a half on waffles today on Sunday. One of our uh, former probies who's a paramedic now, Katie Becker made us this awesome uh, cross stitch of two and a half and waffles. It was a silly idea that I came up with when we came to this firehouse. I told Captain Schmidt that I wanted to do something kind of family based on the weekends and uh, you know, maybe eventually like have our families down or do something. And he was like, maybe we could do brunch. And he's like, well, let's earn it. I was like, all right, let's do it. What do you want to do? And he said, how about we stretch two and a half and then we can have waffles. And I was like, I'm in. So that's where two and a half and waffles was born. Uh, it's pretty awesome. You can see Katie did the four of us. So Captain Schmidt, that's firefighter, Matt Rogers and Katie right there. And then there's me holding a big old plate full of waffles. It's one of those things that's like, makes me happy every time I see it. It makes me kind of laugh a little bit. Coming around here, so this was the last station that engineer Freeman worked at before he went offline and ultimately passed away from cancer, occupational cancer. So this wall is kind of our wall that's dedicated to free. Uh, we have his helmet and his, his jacket. We also have his uh, original Cherry Hills fire helmet from when he was an engineer here. This is kind of one of those reminders that this all could go really fast and you know, we put ourselves out there and put our bodies and our brains out there. And, you know, unfortunately Freeman passed away from cancer and, you know, so we're trying to do the right thing for him by making sure we decon our gear and making sure we're clean. One of the things that all the stations do is uh, alumni coffee cups. This is something that's now spearheaded by Lieutenant Paul Skrabeck. It's an awesome thing that he's doing where if you, when you retire out of a firehouse, whatever firehouse that you really either retired out of or one you worked at for the longest time in your career, you can have your coffee cup sent there. And the idea is you're always welcome. This is still your firehouse. And if you wanna come by and have a cup of coffee with the crew and tell us stories about what it was like when you worked here, we ha hang your coffee cup up and we'll have you down and sit down and have a cup of coffee. So Captain Schmidt and I worked on this. I think this might've been a COVID project if I remember correctly. He had some idea to do this and I really didn't understand what he wanted me to do when we started putting it together. And then once I saw it, I was pretty blown away by how cool it came out. So you can see these are all the coffee cups of the people that have worked out of here, as well as the people that um, have passed away. You got Freeman's cup up there. Every station has a Mike Freeman coffee cup that um, is on their rack as well. So this is the basement here at station 33. Um, it's a little unique. Uh, we have our gym over here, uh, which actually is a pretty decent setup and good size. So we have pretty much all the equipment that you would need to get a good workout in while you're on shift. Um, so here at station 33, uh, we kind of mix it up doing workouts together or workouts on our own. It kind of depends on how the day is going. Uh, but as you can see, we have quite a bit of options here and we also try to do some stuff outside. And then we have another door leading out this way. It just brings us back to the back side of the basement. Uh, we have more bedrooms down here and actually um, Chelsea, who's one of our community risk reduction managers, she has her office here. Um, she's not here every day of the week, but um, when she is here, it's awesome to have an extra face in the station. Um, and then again, we have a couple more um, gym, pieces of gym equipment and training props. As you can probably tell at Station 33, we love to train, so we're always going to find ways to uh, make a prop or make an opportunity for us to get some training in. And uh, we do have um, two bedrooms down here and we kind of converted some of the space that was down here to accommodate the bedrooms. What we like to do 
to have the medics here downstairs um, and our engine crew upstairs. That way at nighttime it kind of min minimizes some of the noise with crews coming and going depending on the calls that we get throughout the night. So we just pretty much have one big loop down here. Uh, we have another door that we can go outside on the side of the station, but we have your basic station amenities here, uh, storage room facilities for kitchen as well as like cleaning supplies. Um, and then we have uh, another men's bathroom and our women's bathroom down here. And then that standpipe prop I was talking about earlier, this is where we like to do that training. So we'll pretend that this is kind of like a stairwell um, of a building and utilize that standpipe prop and utilize our own stairs um, for, for training purposes, um, depending on how we want to stretch the hose and utilize the bedroom hallways. Pretty much every set when we come in here at Station 33, we'll stretch all the hose lines, all the pre-connects. It's about 1,100 feet before 8 a.m. is what we stretch just to you know, keep our skills sharp. And then every time when we go out on a call, we're always talking about different houses with our probies and each other, what layouts might look like, uh, different opportunities, maybe some places where we've been stuck before and we've made mistakes. That's a big one for us is we stretch a lot of hose, but we make a lot of mistakes too. So we gotta keep doing it so we learn from all of our mistakes and get a little bit better every day. That's, that's the whole goal is just to leave it a little bit better every day and grow a little bit every day. Uh, so this is the uh, inside of our hose tower. Uh, it's a pretty unique part of the station, I think, because it's different. Um, a lot of our hose is, again, gone for that hose testing, so this is usually way more full than it appears now. Um, but pretty cool system just to get the hose up there uh, so that it can dry properly and we make sure that we're maintaining, maintaining it all appropriately. Uh, but it takes just you know a couple people to be able to get it going, but um, it's pretty easy once we get them all hung up. Thanks for coming by for Two and a Half and Waffles. The next station you all get to visit is... Station 44, firefighter size. That's your name. Good job. <laughs> that is two your name. This is Two and a Half and Waffles, come on in. That's, that is all okay. the things you should say. Be loud and proud. All right. <laughs> Don't say that before I walk out. <laughs> no, cut that.